Hey, what's up? I'm Helena. We just released Flux Dev on OpenArt. It's a huge upgrade from what we had on the platform, which is Flux Chanel. As most of you know, Flux comes in three versions, the Chanel, Dev, and then we got the Pro. Uh, I'm actually not aware of any online platforms offering the Flux Pro version. Dev is probably one of the best image generation models you can get without doing it locally or renting a super nice GPU. We have done a review of the previous Chanel version um, and the Flux generation style is actually very similar. Dev is just many, many levels up in terms of quality, details, accuracy, and all that. I will link to the previous review videos in the description if you want to check those out. So in today's video, I still want to start with a quick Flux Dev overview and then we'll run some tests together. Also, I actually found some generation tips that are really good for Flux that I want to share with you. In my opinion, these are the four core strengths of Flux Dev. It handles complex compositions really well. On the honey jar, it says Flux. Um, I also asked for a slice of lemon cake and the texture of the honey, the bear shape, the toast, everything is just great. The second thing is ultra realism, really intricate details, and I always like to test it with some sort of water. The third thing is anatomical accuracy. We're just gonna test if it can depict human body parts right, especially fingers. Flux Dev gets it right probably over 95% of the time. The last thing is precise text. The text in this example is not super hard, but let's experiment more on that together. To use Flux Dev, click create, and under model, we're gonna go find Flux Dev. A lot of my prompt inspirations come from this Medium article by ResearchGraph. I'll put a link to it. If you're interested in the more local stuff, it's pretty helpful too. Right now, I'm grabbing this prompt of a unique cocktail. Without modifying anything, let's see what we can get here. And yeah, we're seeing some pretty interesting results. I have now modified this prompt. I made it a spring-inspired theme, and let's see. Nice, so the things I asked for, it pretty much got everything right. I asked for cherry blossom, some sparkly elements inside of the glass. Um, I asked for ice cubes, a peony on the rim, and uh, supposedly there should be a butterfly sitting on the peony, but perhaps I didn't make it super clear. One of the images got it right though. It's pretty good, and for reference, let's try it with the Chanel version. This is not bad too, right? Probably notice there's actually more variety with the Chanel version versus the Dev version. I will talk about that later in the video. And for your reference, this is Midjourney from the prompt, and this is Ideogram from the prompt. It's really up to you which style you like more. You can see Flux Dev has this ultra realism style that's pretty unique. Let's do a human portrait picture with Flux Dev. Look at that. That level of detail is actually insane. Now let's do one with a much shorter prompt, a retro futuristic computer showing text flux depth. And we can look at the hit rate. Half of them only showed flux, the other half showed flux depth. Let's run it again. I don't think it makes a huge difference here, but if you inspect really closely, you do see better details with a higher number of steps. Here's an interesting example. I noticed for this red lion wine, Flux Dev is pretty good in bringing out the cinematic style, but I personally prefer Mid Journey. The texture and aesthetics are just amazing, and Ideogram is really funny. I think this is what an Instagram model lion means to this model. But then here's another example of this panda doing tai chi in a pond. Flux Dev is really good, but then in mid journey, the panda is either doing some weird dance or like, I don't know, what is it doing? It looks like it's 
flicking somebody off or it's like a weird creature drowning. The ideogram is very good. I love this lighting. My tests are definitely nowhere near comprehensive, but out of the many different categories I tried, Flux Dev actually turned out to be the most well-rounded. It's probably not the one best model for certain projects, but it's almost always a second to the best model. I'm just gonna bring it back to default for our next generations. This is a really complicated prompt. It's very confusing because there is text in here and there are a lot of descriptions. What we want to print out is let the prompt madness begin. And sometimes Flux would mistake that for the text that we want to print out. But if you look at the four images we generated, this one came really close, which is really not bad. And we actually don't have to throw away this image. We can do some quick fixes on OpenArt. Click remove. We're gonna use, I think quick erase is probably good for this case. Erase the wrongly spelled T. All right, and let me now save this image. Add this image into the editor as well. And now we're gonna use crop. Get this as like this. And we can click on background, smart remove background. And now it's removed. All right. Now we have this picture ready and let's just drop that in it here and boom it becomes a blend bore which is still in beta but uh it's pretty useful i'm gonna like just turn this a little bit so they don't look like complete duplicates and now it's basically done we can either just click download and you'll see that this picture is good to go or we can try blending them i'm very unsure about this and here we got the blended versions. This one's similar to if we just exported the blend board without AI blending it. And the second one helped us re-render the font. It didn't really get all the letters right. And um, it kind of changed the overall image, including the person and uh, a lot of smaller elements like the lining. Uh, just wanted to show you this other option. Say we didn't have any text here. Let's remove all that. Say we have this image and we want to put some sort of text on it. There's actually just a non-AI text feature. We can just be like, let the prompt madness begin. And let's maybe change that to like a nice dark crimson red. Probably definitely bold and larger. And there are all kinds of fonts that you can choose from. We all know that AI is still not the best with text. It's definitely going to keep on getting better, but for now, this might be easier. To save it, it's the same. You can just click the download to loco or download. Because this text is basically just a layer of the blend board, as you can see. And there we go. We have the AI generated text with a quick fix and a non-AI text from the OpenR editor. Flex tip number one is there are some magic words that really work great for this model. Let's generate some Princess Peach Racing. It took a little bit longer because I'm actually on 50 steps now to be able to show the difference better. We're seeing this really nice style and all the text is basically right. Now let's remove detailed masterpiece, professional. We can keep bold colors, but let's also remove all inspiring. It's probably not the most obvious right now, but let me remove a few more words. There's cinematic HDR. You'll see that the average quality is getting quite different. It's pretty noticeable. Let's just delete these ones so it's easier to see the difference. If we look at the top row versus the bottom row, we're really losing a lot of the style, the aesthetics and lighting. So these are some words that I love using to really bring your creations to the next level. Let's test this with the lion prompt. So that's with the magic words and without the magic words. The second Flux tip is, I've noticed Flux seems to be less prone to prioritizing keywords based on how you arrange them or where you put them. But shuffling the order does help give you more variety. For example, this is a prompt of a girl's selfie. 
and we're seeing the four images are very similar to each other. And we can click create again to see what happens. They're still super similar. It just feels like the same exact beach and almost like the same person. The longer your prompt gets, the more deterministic your results are going to be. With the same long prompt, you're probably going to end up getting very similar things. So if you've spent a lot of time and you've got this carefully crafted prompt, but you're tired of getting basically the same image, you can start shuffling the order of sentences. For example, let's move Instagram story selfie up. I'm just randomly shuffling the order. Now, after shuffling, we're getting a bit more variety, but Lux is really good at prompt alignment. As a result, it's going to give you pretty consistent things based on your prompt. The last tip is we support image to image reference on the flex dev model. It works really well. With the previous selfie prompt, I just deleted some of the conflicting descriptions and I used this as the reference image by adjusting the creativity level at 0.8. These are what I got and at 0.92, I'm getting these ones. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, tell me what you think in the comments, and subscribe to the channel. I put all useful links in the description below. As always, have fun creating. This is Helena. I'll see you next time.